Hey guys, welcome back to episode two of Doing It Like a Grown Up. I'm here with a friend today. Look at this. I have friends. Amazing. This is my buddy, <laughs> Matt Asaro. He is a dentist, and today we are going to talk about sexual oral health. Sexual oral health. Because that's one of the things that people don't realize. A lot of people talk about safe sex. A lot of you hear a lot about you know using protection, using contraceptives, ways to prevent sexually transmitted diseases, but a lot of people don't realize that so many different diseases can be spread through oral sex. And because I specialize in the oral cavity, that's what I want to talk to you guys about today. Safe oral sex. Safe oral sex. Safe oral sex. All right. What do, what do we need to know about <laughs> it, Matt? <laughs> well, tell me. Why, don't you, why don't you begin by telling them about what I noticed <laughs> so so one, of, one, of the, one of the things that uh, I notice on patients sometimes, it, uh, most of the time I've seen it in some of my younger female patients, and it is something that we call fellatio associated petechial hemorrhages of the soft palate. And what they are is they are very small reddish uh, bumps that are usually painless on the, um, the top of the mouth towards the back, which is what we call the soft palate. Okay, and I was telling my dear friend Ashley about the uh, you know the occurrence of these bumps, and that's when she had me take a flashlight and look into her oral cavity. Wait, that's not how that happened. Okay, so <laughs> we've been meaning to make this video for like months, and he told me about this, and I was like, okay, cool, dude, awesome. So then one day we were hanging out and we were talking about stuff. And my jaw had been bothering me, and I was like, oh my god, Matt, like, and I told him the story, I was like, can you take a look? I don't like, I'm afraid, like, my tooth is fucked up. So he comes over <laughs> with his, like, iPhone flashlight, and he gets all close, and I remember the previous night, I had hooked up with this guy, and we had had a little session, and he, I opened my mouth, and I'm like, oh, fuck. I was like, just ignore my throat, just ignore it, and he's looking, he's like, this is like a textbook case. Did you prepare this for me? Oh my god! Thank you so much. Can I take pictures? Let's take some video of it. So we got a we got a little perfect textbook video for you guys to show you exactly what it looks like. Okay. I'll show you here. It's up on the screen. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, so just so you guys know, this is not something that you really need to be concerned with or worried about. Just be aware that this does happen, especially if you are engaging in um, you know some type of rough oral sex practice. <laughs> Very, <laughs> which which it very rough, but don't worry about it. It went away after like three days. It's not a big deal. But in all seriousness, um, there are some very serious um, diseases that are transmitted through oral sex. So one of the biggest one, one of the ones that I really wanted to talk to you guys about, it's called HPV, human papilloma virus. I'm sure you guys have heard of it, but I'm not so sure that you guys are aware that it is the most common sexually transmitted uh, illness in the United States. And about 79 million Americans are currently infected with HPV. And uh, also about two thirds of oropharyngeal cancers have uh, oral HPV DNA in them. So basically what this means is that uh, a lot of times people, uh, especially males, are infected with HPV and they have no symptoms. So they don't know that they're infected with HPV. And then they can later in life, um, through a uh, you know, series of other causes, uh, smoking, alcohol, a lot of different things put you at higher risk of, of uh, actually uh, developing um, oral pharyngeal cancer. But the um, the oral H the oral HPV can um, can mutate and and become um, oral pharyngeal cancer and um, yeah it's it's no, it's no joke it's something that a lot of Americans are um, becoming infected with. And then what are symptoms if someone shows symptoms of it? So that's the scariest thing is there really are no symptoms for oral HPV. So a lot of people say oh how will I know if uh, I have it or how can I prevent it and it's pretty simple the, the most the most effective ways to prevent contracting HPV or any type of um, STD through oral sex is to use protection a mm -hmm. um, there is a vaccination the vaccination comes in three parts and you have to have it done before your age of 26 men can be vaccinated with the first two vaccines but they usually they don't need the third vaccine because it's 
um, for females who are at risk of developing cervical cancer. Got it. Um, another huge thing is to do, limit the number of sexual partners that you have. Uh, this sounds um, simple, but it really is true. And also, um, get tested. If you are changing sexual partners and you're not sure, the best way to be safe and, and sure is to get tested regularly. Oh my God, that's what I've been telling them. Mm -hmm. So, question. So, if somebody has just like an oral manifestation of HPV or like a general manifestation, so you can transfer... Yes, so oral sex. that's one of the ways in which it's actually transmitted uh, is if you uh, engage in oral sex with somebody who has genital HPV, you can develop the infection and the infection actually hides in the, the, the tonsil or crypts in the back of your mouth towards your oral pharynx. And like I said, it's there's no symptoms, so a lot of times people don't realize that this is yeah. something that they're infected with. What are other STDs so, that can be transmitted? Good question. Um, one of the biggest ones, I'm sure a lot of people have heard of it, is um, herpes simplex virus 1 and herpes simplex virus 2. It used to be back in the day thought that only herpes simplex virus type 1 could be transmitted um, or could be um, infected orally. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, because our generation has increased the amount of oral sex that we're having, now they found herpes simplex virus 1 and herpes simplex virus 2 manifested orally. What? Yes. And the what? this is this is this is another thing that's important to realize is that just because you have just because somebody has herpes of the oral cavity doesn't necessarily mean that they're always um, able to transmit the virus to somebody else. Mm -hmm. It has to be during a, sp a specific uh, phase of the virus's um, cycle, mm -hmm. which is called the vesicular phage phase. Okay. And um, I can put up a little photo here so you guys can see exactly what it looks like. It might be kind of gross for some of you, but um, you know, warning. This, this, yeah, warning. This is something that uh, is, is real and something that you should be aware of. So the same ways that we can prevent HPV, we can prevent herpes simplex virus one and two as well. All right. Okay. So if somebody has herpes, they can still engage in sex, but you should let your partner know about it. And then obviously if you're in the, whatever, this, this vesicular, vesicular phase. Vesicular mm -hmm. phase. Well, yeah, that's something that you sh should just be on the look for because if you see somebody who's, who has something that looks like this, mm -hmm. you know, in their, in their mouth, um, or on like their, a cold sore or, or on their lip, um, then that's something that uh, you should be aware of and so try to stay away from. Yeah. Okay. What about, what about other STDs? Can they be transmitted? Yeah, so you, you can also transmit uh, chlamydia and gonorrhea through oral sex. However, they're not nearly as uh, commonly transmitted through oral sex. So the big ones that I kind of wanted to really harp on today mm -hmm. were HPV and herpes. That makes sense. Okay. All right, good to know. So if you thought that you are just uh, being safe by only engaging in some fellatio or cunnilingus, that's not true. You still have to practice safe sex. Safe oral sex. So, if you guys are engaging in oral sex and you want to be safe about it, have safe oral sex, use protection, condoms. Limit the number of sexual partners that you have. Mm -hmm. Get tested regularly. Get tested regularly, yeah, because, I mean, honestly, a lot of people complain about condoms. People aren't carrying around dental dams to go eat out girls. So. We know you're all doing it. Yeah. We know you're all doing it. So get tested regularly. If you have a new partner, go get tested. So then you're safe. And make sure that your partner is getting tested. Yes. Have that conversation. This is how you do it like a growing up, right? That's it. Yep. We're growing up. We're growing up. All right. Stay yeah. safe, guys. <laughs> Yeah! 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 Safe sex! Safe sex! <laughs>